Hello, I'm Carl Ross of the University of Portsmouth in the United Kingdom. Today I'm going to give a lecture on recent advances and submarine structures. The oceans. Three quarters of the Earth's surface is covered by water. The Earth's surface is covered by water is over ten times larger than the surface area of the Moon. The greatest depth of the oceans is found in the Mariana Trench. This is 11.52 kilometers or 7.16 miles deep. The Mariana Trench is some 30% deeper than the height of Mount Everest. Military use of the oceans. The oceans have great military value. Missile launching platforms are likely to be placed at the ocean's bottoms. Radar does not work underwater. Heat-seeking missiles do not work underwater. Ocean resources. Methane deposits in the form of hydrates have been found at depths of 3 miles, or 4.83 kilometers. Off the coast of the USA, 30 gas fields have been found. In one gas field alone, it is believed that there is sufficient gas to satisfy the USA's needs for 105 years, based on the 1996 consumption rate. Deposits of precious metals and minerals have also been found on the ocean's bottom. Ocean pressures. At the bottom of the Mariner's Trench, the pressure is about 1158 bar, or 60,800 pounds per square inch. Currently, a large submarine can only dive to a depth of about 610 meters, or 2,000 feet. The construction of a large submarine pressure hull for very large depths is not easy. Now this shows you a drawing of a submarine pressure hull. The submarine, there's two hulls there. One the inside hull of the submarine pressure hull, the dash line of the casing, which has water on the outside and water on the inside. The submarine pressure hull has water on the outside and atmospheric pressure on the inside. This shows you another spherical pressure hull. This is a smaller, for smaller submarines, a spherical pressure hull and a casing. The casing is water on the outside and water on the inside. And the spherical pressure hull has water on the outside and atmospheric pressure on the inside. This sort of hull is suitable for great depths, but cannot take a big payload. This is shell instability. Under external pressure, a circular cylinder can fail at a fraction of the same pressure to cause the cylinder to collapse under internal pressure. And uh, this is called shell instability. It's the most undesirable mode of failure. And submarine structural designers try to avoid this mode of failure. If you can make it run, don't get too close to it. That shows shell instability of a food can under an internal vacuum. This shows cell instability of a rail car tank under an internal vacuum. In this case, the, vac the internal surface of the, um, the rail car tank was filled with steam. The surplus steam vented out, and when the, the, the trapped steam turned into water, it caused a vacuum and it collapsed into a very low internal pressure. Now, one way to stop prevent shell instability is to stiffen the circular cylinder or the submarine pressure hull with ring, stiffens, ring stiffeners. This does not decrease the stress, stress much, but increases its resistance to buckling or shell instability. If the ring stiffened combination is not strong enough, the entire ring stiffened combination can buckle bodily, so general instability as shown there. Future structural design. This is the design I came up with in 1987. A corrugated pressure hull. There's two hulls there. The outside hull is a casing, which is water on the outside and water on the inside. And the inside hull is a corrugated pressure hull, with water on the outside 
and atmospheric pressure on the inside. I took two corrugated mathematical models to prove my theory. This was corrugated vessel one. It's dimensions shown in inches and also in meters. This is corrugated vessel two, which had a bigger diameter. Same length. Dimensions shown in inches and meters. Corrugated vessel two. I compared the strength of these vessels, corrugated vessel one, with its ring st stiffened equivalent one, which is exactly the same weight and volume. And you can see corrugated vessel one with a much higher buckling resistance than ring stiffened one, and corrugated vessel two with ring stiffened two. Ring stiffened two is exactly the same weight and volume as corrugated vessel two. And you can see there again the buckling pressure was much higher with the corrugated vessel than with the ring stiffened equivalent. That shows the corrugated vessel one thing. This shows corrugated vessel two buckling. This is a corrugated food can which buckled exactly the same way. Corrugated food uh, food cans are exactly the same collapse method as uh, submarine pressure hull because the food is put into the can and the can is uh, uh, when it's hot and it's sealed and when the can cools down comes to an internal vacuum and it could collapse like that. It's exactly the same as the submarine pressure hull collapse mode. Now, full-scale vessels are suggested they are built up with truncated conical shells with flanges on the end, which are bolted together. This shows a typical, a typical truncated conical shell element for uh, building the corrugated, the large corrugated pressure vessel. This is a corrugated pressure vessel made in carbon fiber reinforced plastic. I describe this as the most expensive bean can in the world. Another idea I had was the tube siphon pressure hull. The tubes are there, they circumfer freshly around the uh, the inside circumference of the tube of the uh, pressure vessel. The tubes can be filled with internal pressure, so the tubes are under internal pressure. It will swell outwards and negate the effects of external pressure to some extent. Another idea was a combination of ring and tube stiffened and corrugated vessel, the whole lot together. Enclosures. This shows heavy lipsoidal domes. The prolate dome is on the top right, the oblate dome is on the bottom left, and we found that the very prolate and the very oblate domes had low buckling resistance. The best buckling resistance we found with this set of domes was the hemispherical dome, which is shown in the middle of the, uh, the two rows to the left. And with the buckling of a hemilipsoidal oblate dome is like that, with the nose dense inwards. Very low pressure. The buckling of a heavy lips or a prolate dome is like that. It buckles in a lower manner, the same as a slender buckles. This is another idea I had to. The problem with dome ends is it's difficult to build, build because they're, they're huge and they're very, they're, they're very difficult to build precisely. And I suggested we have inverted dome ends. So you've got two hulls there. You've got a casing on the outside with water pressure on the inside and water pressure on the outside. You've got the pressure hull on the inside with water pressure on the outside and atmospheric pressure on the inside. And the dome is like that. It's concave to the effects of pressure. So it'll be in tension. Because it's in tension, it can't buckle. This was a model we made of a dome cup. And we tested it. tested several dome cups and dome caps and the tank. This was a two. This was the two-layer dome cup, which, as you can see at the, at the top, that claps in the flange. It didn't actually collapse in the body of the dome cup. It claps in the flange because the flange was weak. And here we have a comparison of the dome cap, which has got four layers. As a conventional dome, the dome cup with three layers is almost twice the 
tough pressure it. A zone cap too, you may re recall it collapsed in the flange, so it still had a collapse pressure, similar to the dome cap four, with four layers, but in actual fact, had it not collapsed in the flange, it would have had a much higher buckling, pr buckling pressure, collapse pressure, I beg your pardon, and dome cap, this is another dome cap, the bottom one, with two layers, with the tube inserted, and you can see it's ten bar, which is much higher than four layers, so that dome cap two layers is as strong, or probably stronger than and the dome cap with four layers, a conventional dome. This is a ring stiffened prolate dome. This is a way to make prolate dome stronger. We did this, we found they were very strong. Conclusions. It is likely that in the future many submarine pressure houses will be constructed in man made materials such as glass, boron, carbon fibers, and carbon nanotubes. In the case of carbon nanotubes, the carbon nanotube has 600 times the strength to weight ratio of high tensile steel. It's still in its infancy, but when it comes, it'll revolutionize uh, submarine design and spacecraft design, etc. Submarine constructed man made fibers will lend themselves to be readily constructed in the novel forms described here. Conclusions 2. The tube stiffened pressure hull can be used in, con in conjunction with the fuel cell, but the tubes can be used to store oxygen and hydrogen. The use of inverted domes looks attractive, especially as these can be constructed more cheaply. Inclusion 3. Noise insulation of a submarine pressure hull can be better achieved with composites rather than metals, and the former have better sound absorption qualities. References. This is a postgraduate book I wrote, Pressure Vessels, External Pressure Technology, second edition, published by Woodhead Publishers of Cambridge in 2011. And that's my website where you can find lots of information on uh, submarine pressure house. So thank you, ladies and gentlemen.